Some 800,000 people came to this protest in Prague on November the 25th, 1989, demanding an end to communism. Czechoslovakia's Velvet Revolution was sparked eight days previously, when a much smaller demonstration was violently suppressed by riot police. A story that a protester had been killed was reported by the Prague correspondent for Reuters news agency, Michal Jantowski, but it wasn't true. It was a mistake, uh, but it was an honest mistake. We, we went by the book, we uh, acquired two sources, but uh, what we did not realize at the time that they were both relying on the same uh, eyewitness uh, and uh, that the eyewitness was unreliable. The story of the dead student, which further inflamed protests, underlines how journalists struggled to cope with the breathtaking speed of events in November 1989. The Velvet Revolution began just eight days after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Alison Smale was the chief East Europe correspondent for the Associated Press in 1989. She was in Leipzig when news broke of the protests in Prague. Everybody who was in Germany for the AP at the moment that the wall fell was ordered to stay there on pain of death or injury. So I called New York and said, you know, this is exploding and I should move on. Smale arrived in time for this, the first mass demonstration in Prague on November the 20th. So did Colin McIntyre, Chief East Europe correspondent for Reuters, who was also diverted from the revolution in East Germany. We stood at the window of a temporary office in the Yalta and watched as the crowd just, they just came slowly up the, up the Winchester Square and then by the time they got to halfway up, um, we knew it was, it was all over. And that was the moment where, for me personally here, it was also obvious that the population had, had shifted and that there would be no way for the communists to hold on. It was also a key moment for Michal Jantowski, who was born in Prague. He had helped organise a new opposition group called Civic Forum and was increasingly aware of a conflict of interest. It was untenable, so I gave my notice to Reuters and, uh, and the next thing I knew I was the spokesman for the Civic Forum, so... <laughs> the revolution gathered rapid momentum with a campaign for dissident playwright Václav Havel to become president. While Alison Smale stayed on in Prague to continue reporting, Colin McIntyre returned to base in Vienna but there was no respite. I remember working in Vienna um, and we were still coping with Czechoslovakia. And then someone announced, came in from the thing, said, Bulgaria's gone. And we said, oh no, no, no not yet, surely. You know, can, can, can they not wait a bit? Uh, But by 1989, people across the Eastern Bloc had already waited four decades for freedom. They would wait no longer.